This is Spotlight, WMFE's arts, culture, and entertainment segment. The Spotlight is on now. I'm Talia Blake, filling in for Nicole Darden Creston. A show celebrating the music of African American pianist Fats Waller will debut in Orlando on April 12th. Roberta Emerson is the director of Ain't Misbehavin. I stopped by Orlando Shakes to talk with her. Roberta, thank you so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time. So, tell me about the musical Ain't Misbehaving that will be debuting in April here in Orlando. So, Ain't Misbehaving is one of the American classics that is based on the music of Fats Waller, who is a influential uh, jazz artist of our time. And the musical has been left in our canon as one of the, one of the great musical reviews. Uh, so it has very little dialogue, mostly improv, if any dialogue, but it's straight song, so it's just the music, uh, music based on Fats Waller. And in our production, it is starring local actors, which is kind of how the musical is supposed to be set up, right? It was originated by some powerhouses back in the time, Nell Carter, Amelia, Ken uh, Page, and Andre DeShields, but we are using our actors' names as the musical review is supposed to transition decades. I know you said that this is based on Fats Waller. For people who don't know who that is, can you kind of just explain him a little bit? He is a jazz singer that wrote obviously wrote Ain't Misbehavin', which is the title of the musical, during the Renaissance, uh, specifically in the Harlem Renaissance. And many people, you know, know his music, but don't know actually how political he was and how political his music was. And so he very much wrote for black culture of that time and or commenting on black culture in a way that was both inspirational and pointed. And whether people notice the pointedness of it or not, uh, black folk did, right? So um, he was very much ahead of his time in the way he reclaimed who we were and who we were meant to be. So I know you said that Ain't Misbehaving, it's going to be mostly improv and there's a lot of songs that will be featured, you know, Fats Waller songs. What is your favorite Fats Waller song and will people who come to see the show be able to hear it? Ooh. I mean, I guess my favorite in the show is Black and Blue, so of course they're going to hear it because it's in the show. And blue. It's my favorite because it's the one that kind of hits what I wanted to direct the show for and why I wanted to direct the show. Oftentimes, Ain't Misbehaving is placed in seasons as, you know, shiny entertainment for theater people, and they leave it there. They leave it kind of shallow, right? Um, and especially when you're using black artists to entertain what is predominantly white spaces, to me, that is not the purpose of who Fats Waller was or his music. And it, for me, it's a celebration of black authenticity. But he also puts Black and Blue in there, which is a jazz number, slow jazz number, that very much challenges society's intake of black art and black people and black spaces and black culture without giving the rightful due to black people. What did I do to be so black, black and blue? And so most of the songs up until Black and Blue are very, you know, either celebratory or pointed in some way, but Black and Blue kind of gets to a point where it, it, it just lands the real themes and messages of don't only celebrate who we are as Black people, but recognize what systems you've created to uncelebrate us, even though we've provided such historical and, and valuable assets to America. Speaking of that, you know, you said that Ain't Misbehaving the way you wanted to direct it. You wanted to make sure that that kind of message was in the show. Ain't Misbehaving originally premiered on Broadway in like the 1970s. Yeah. And I'm curious, why bring it to Orlando? Why bring it here now? Why it was selected is really up to the artistic director of the space. However, when I agreed to direct it, for me, I do nothing if, w without making it relevant. 
and Ain't Misbehaving, Though I Love It, is one of those musicals that I don't see a point doing if you're not actually going to make it relevant because you're subjecting black people to entertain the masses of PWI spaces in a way that can be real degrading. And so I refuse to do that. But like I said, Fats Waller, that was not his intent with any of his music. And even though it's put together in this review, his music was very what it was. It was very pointed and it was very black culture. And what that meant for me in 2024 is to bring back the celebration of black joy and black authenticity and black integrity and black excellence, right? And to both celebrate the culture and take it back. So my cast and I are very focused on making this an eight misbehaving for us. And also teaching that lesson to our spaces and to the people who come and see it, to have an understanding of this is what our authenticity looks like. And we're giving you access. We're letting you celebrate with us. We're letting you experience with us, but we're taking us back. It kind of sounds like that is a through line through your work, that that is kind of a mission for you. And kind of talk to me a little bit about, you know, how you look at directing and how you take on directing when you're here in Orlando. For me, as a director, it is it is important to create spaces where people can be authentic. And that's anybody, right? Anybody I direct, I want to create brave spaces where people walk in and are accepted for who they are, are seen for who they are. When you're stepping into a role, it's still you, right? Taking on kind of the spirit of another person. So I don't believe in, you know, the separation of people and what we do as artists. I want people to be able to bring that in. But I also think that as a black woman who exists in the intersectionality of many different identities, right? Black, queer, a mother, an artist, an actor, a director. It's important for me to recognize marginalized spaces and marginalized voices, and specifically black voices, because that is my experience. And black artists specifically, I mean, all global majority artists, but black artists specifically have given so much and are rarely celebrated in the way that we should be and in the way that we deserve to be. And so I do find that a lot of my work is about elevating the black voices and all BIPOC voices, but when I can, I do wanna elevate black voices, black women, black leads, black men, black LGBTQ people, right? The, the entire diaspora, what it means to be who we are because there is such excellence there. And I think that should be glorified in the way that everything else has been. You know, it's not like black people are a monolith. You know, we come in all shapes and sizes and shades. So you said that there's going to be some comedy, there's going to be some improv, there's going to be some song. But what do you really hope people take away from this when they leave the performance? Joy. Joy. I mean, I think that's my simplest answer. I hope people take joy. I hope people take inspiration. I hope people take integrity. I hope people see, I mean, these five actors, baby, are just everything and they are giving everything. We are lucky to be in the room with these five people. And so I hope people walk out feeling how lucky they are to have experienced what these actors are bringing to this space. And for those who want to attend Ain't Misbehaving, what information do they need to know? Go on the website, orlandoshakes.org, <laughs> buy some tickets. Uh, we are, I, I would be remiss to not say that we are having a Black Renaissance Affinity Night that is specifically to celebrate Black culture, Black authenticity, Black joy, and for Black people to come and be able to experience this show together, again, uh, as a way of us, you know, celebrating each other with each other and taking us back. But all, please welcome. We want everybody to experience the joy. Go on the website buy tickets, bring friends, come back. I would say, because it's in our thrust stage, you can't see the same show twice, right? The nature of the show, you cannot see the same show twice. So come more than once, sit on a different side of the theater because you will get a different experience. Roberta, thank you so much for talking with me today. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, thank you. That was Ain't Misbehavin' director Roberta Emerson. Hear the full Spotlight episode on our website, wmfe.org, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Talia Blake, in for Nicole Darton-Creston. Thanks for listening.